Hello and welcome. My name's Super Saiyan and this is my review of Destiny 2. Now this is a little bit odd for me, I don't normally do video game reviews so hopefully you'll enjoy this and if you do please do hit that like button and subscribe. So firstly one of the reasons why I'm doing this review is I was asked by quite a few people to, to do this. I put a picture of it on sort of Instagram and they said oh yeah you, you know do, do a review, waiting for your review. Which I'll happily oblige by. At the moment I think it's only got like four reviews on Metacritic uh, from critics and we all know about what sort of backroom deals go go on w between sort of publishers and um, reviewers and all the rest of it so I thought I'd give my honest uh, opinion I've you know bought the game uh, I mainly bought it because I had the first one all those three years ago and I actually bought my PlayStation 4 back then um, because of uh, Destiny 1 and I played that for many many hours had lots of enjoyment with you know various friends I really had an amazing time and I want to replicate that with this um, I didn't really know much about the game but I knew that on base level even if it was more of the same I'd still have an excellent time now I've recorded a load of footage and things I completed the game it took me about uh, two days um, or two evenings to complete it but as everybody knows if you play Destiny 1 you're just getting started um, the the rest of the game, the meat of the game, is really in all the strikes and uh, all the co-op adventures and things you can go on. And although I've completed the game, a lot of the adventures I've I've gone on and I've just started myself uh, are more memorable than the story. What I'm going to do is just break this game down into a number of categories. I'm going to start off with graphics. Now. I've played this game on my PlayStation 4 Pro and um, it does do 4k it's not a native 4k but it does um, give you you know that res resolution uh, I think it runs at 30 frames per second which is yeah terribly slow especially if you're coming from PC and PC gaming and things I think you can get it running at 60 frames per second on the PC and it, and it is coming out on the PC uh, later on in the year on October the 24th I think but at the moment uh, you can get it for your you know PlayStation 4 and Xbox one it'd be interesting to see what they do with the graphics for the Xbox Xbox one X uh, whether they can push that and get 60 frames per second on on that but either way, it's a gorgeous looking game. Um, graphics are, uh, I want to say, better than the first. They are a slight improvement. The worlds just look fantastic. It really gives you a sense that you're on a you know, completely different planet and all the effects, the day-night cycle, really just adds into the immersion. All the, the effects for your, your powers, for the guns, for the grenades. One thing I will say about the graphics as well is unfortunately the game doesn't support HDR. I'm really gutted about that because I've probably been spoiled by playing games such as Mass Effect and Titanfall and Uncharted which do offer the HDR uh, and Last of Us Remastered as well. And games like that, the environments really do pop out um, and you get that much more especially when there's fire and um, there's, there's a fair bit of fire scenes in this as well and uh, I think that, that the game would have would have benefited greatly for that now let's go on to the the sounds and, and the music of the game uh, the sounds um, oh wow some of the weapons in the game just sound incredible uh, I've recently unlocked uh, cold heart which is one of the pre-order bonus weapons um, I'll talk about what you unlock and things a little bit later on without going over any spoilers um, but yeah, if you've got a decent like 7.1 system, a um, uh, decent subwoofer, and an incredible amplifier, and some good speaker cable, this game will completely immerse you in, in all of the sounds and the music. The music is fantastic. You've got some really good, um, fast, bassy, beat-driven music uh, in some of the, the engagements and the battles. Um, you've got some excellent sound effects from all the weapons. Um, and the special powers it is top notch and I would say it's an improvement over Destiny 1 for that. I don't want this review to turn into a Destiny 1 versus Destiny 2 at all. Well if you played Destiny 1 um, you'll know that the, the controls just work very well. You've got your melee for your uh, R1 button, you've got your, your normal trigger finger for your firing, you, you've got your grenades, um, you know you tap your R1L1 buttons and then you, you launch your super. Um, it just feels 
One thing about Destiny is it just works really well in terms of the controls and the, and the gameplay. Um, it's such an easy sort of game to get into and to control. Part of that might be the, the sort of 30 frames, frames per second. It's very solid in that regard. Yes, it is a bit slow for you know first person shooters and things, but uh, it works so well uh, with this game with with that frame rate and um, the, the controls of the you know the controller. Um, you can be quite precise um, with the controller, but likewise, it's a, it's a breeze to just aim and just shoot and um, jump and you know perform your supers things like that. Okay, story-wise, I don't want to get into some uh, into any spoilers, so I'm I'm not going to touch on the story. What I will say is um, it's quite similar to the first one in that um, you know there's baddies and you know you're the goody and you 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 know you gotta you gotta go out and build up your character um, and hunt for better weapons and loot and, and all the rest of it. Um, there's a lot of that sort of um, aspect to it. I will say that the start of the game really does immerse you and it, it, it allows you to feel like you are humanity sort of like last hope. I think it does a really good job with that. At first I was a bit um, sceptical about the, the start and where it was going um, but it, uh, it did serve its purpose. But story wise I think it is a better story than the first one. There's a lot more meat on the bones, there's more um, cutscenes, uh, the dialogue uh, in all the missions and uh, all the extra missions um, really had me laughing out loud. They've introduced uh, quite a bit of this sort of dry humour, sort of dry British humour, um, and uh, that really uh, tugged at my heartstrings and uh, you know made me enjoy the game a bit more. Gave the characters in the game, although you don't see them much, you you hear them through the voice chat of Ghost or whatever. It gave them more of a personality and it really helped build up that relationship with them. I said before it would last you. Uh, a good two evenings. Maybe, maybe you you start it on Saturday morning, and you probably finish finish it um, you know Sunday or Sunday afternoon, something like that. Uh, however, it has the potential to last much much longer. As I said at the start of the review, you, you finish the game, and then that is when the game actually starts. You know, you, you go in and do these strikes every day, or um, every week you've got a new nightfall, or whatever you, it's more of a social thing if you got like two or three mates that you log into playstation with go through the strikes and go through the missions and things and collect the loot and look for those engrams then it's more of the same in terms of you know destiny one the game can also be lengthened with its multiplayer i was never really a big fan of the multiplayer i'd much rather have it as sort of like a fast paced 60 frames per second so something quick uh, and more sort of jerk reaction kind of thing than this, or I'd rather it be um, sort of more squad based, like bat Battlefield, um, where you go capture objectives and things like that, rather than this sort of multi. Many people might just still like the, the first person shooter, sort of um, one, one team be another team um, on small maps. I mean, you may like that. I don't think the game is particularly difficult. When I first started it, I don't think I picked the difficulty level, but I breezed through it. I think I probably died once or twice, if that. Um, and I think that was due to like falling. I was never really in serious trouble with um, the damage taken from enemies and uh, that's a good thing about these, these Destiny games is that um, they've got sort of like a universal sort of difficulty level but it spikes if you put yourself forward for the higher power required um, strikes and nightfalls and things like that. Now this game is very replayable. You can go into the same strike again, look for that same loot um, and maybe get something else but every time you play it it's a little bit of a different experience because you model your own experience especially if you've got mates that you want to go through strikes with and things um, and that's one of the beauties about this sort of game so in summary if you like destiny one pick this up right now yes you can take the view that uh it's more of the same but it's on different planets you've got different weapons you'll create different adventures because there's different strikes I looked at this uh, in a positive light. I never thought, oh, Destiny 1, they ripped me off with the content and things like that. I knew that I'd get my money's worth because I'd play it uh, a fair bit and I'd go through all the content that the game had to offer. And I thoroughly enjoyed the first one. So if you really like the first Destiny uh, and it's been a couple of years because I don't think I played the first Destiny, I think I stopped playing the first Destiny about a year or two ago and you want... Uh, the new Destiny on new planets 
with uh, new weapons, with new music, then I'd definitely recommend it. Um, there are a few uh, negatives that I want to say because, like, you know, this is my honest opinion of, of this game. One of the negatives is the jet bike. Uh, they don't give you the jet bike from the off, which is really, really poor, in my opinion. Um, they should have given you the jet bike, uh, or at least given you it on the second planet you go to, because you've got these big planets, and the game sort of encourages you to do all the patrols and the extra side missions, and getting around them, foot slogging it around, is just terrible. Um, you know, you create these big planets, you need a good uh, mode of transport to get to all these places, and take part in all these events and things and I think that's a really big letdown they dropped the ball on that one I think they should have given you the uh, jet bike you only get it uh, if you're a level 20 um, which is basically at the end of the game or you have completed the game they're, they're, the, they're the two criteria the second um, bit of a letdown was the DLC weapon that you get for pre-ordering it uh, you don't get that until you've completed the game either. Now, I sort of understand that because it's a pretty decent weapon, the Cold Heart, in my opinion anyway. I haven't got like, you know, 20 exotics yet. I've got a few exotic um, pieces of armour and I've got a few exotic weapons, but I really like it. It's, I think it's got like 100 uh, in its uh, ammo magazine, but it's not really a magazine, it's like an energy weapon. And when you get the criticals, the sound of it slightly changes and Oh, it just sounds so cool. I'm really looking forward to all the other weapons. Another thing is, I've seen gameplay of miniguns and things. I I've, I've haven't had a minigun weapon yet throughout the whole campaign. Maybe it's a different class that gets that. I, I, I don't know. But either way, I've completed the game with the Warlock, uh, got to 20. And um, as you can see, this is all, obviously all, all my footage of, of some of the battles I've had. The real question is, how much content have they cut out of the game this time? Um, I think the content for the price is good at the moment. I don't like all the uh, the paid uh, microtransactions. I think they should just get rid of all that. Um, Activision uh, EA, in my opinion, when it comes to that, uh, I think that's terrible. I, I don't like the purchase of silver or, you know, to, to buy sort of emotes and things like that. I mean, this game is a full priced release. It's £50 or so. I really don't think that you need to be having any in-game purchases at all. You know, you've spent your however much it costs to, to make the game, you pay your, your £50, that should be it. Um, the in-game purchases absolutely suck. They're not forced on you, but they... I've watched some videos and read some uh, articles where it is pay to win in terms of weapon modifications and, and things like that and also consumables uh, shaders as consumables i mean you know you use a con use a shader and then you can't use it again i mean what's that about it, yeah so the pay content if you can ignore all of that you know and not give them a single dollar of your money or pound of your money then that's great uh, i would strongly adv advise you to adv avoid all of that that paid stuff um, and just deal with the main game and you'll still have a, an amazing time with it. And that's the end of my review. That's that's pretty much everything that I wanted to uh, say about the game. Uh, I apologise if I've missed anything. I don't normally like to give scores on games, but if I was to give this a score for the graphics, the, the music, uh, the gameplay, the longevity, I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. I'd give it a 9 if it made some better decisions at the start of the game and didn't have any of that paid stuff and maybe gave you another planet or two. But as it stands, I'd probably say it's a solid eight. So if you're on the fence, definitely uh, check it out. And then you can add me, uh, my gamer tags uh, Super Saiyan 2, and then we can go and uh, play strikes together. So I'll see you on the battlefield. Thanks ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching The Emperor Protects.